a big hello to all my students of MA English second semester today we are continuing with our video of uh, of friendship which is an essay by Francis Bacon and in my last video we had done this portion we had started with the essay and we had done the introduction and uh, we had understood Bacon's concept of friendship and uh, he continues with his ideas and we are going to read the fruits of friendship which means uh, he is trying to tell us what are the advantages of friendship and how can one benefit from it so um, I am reading from here and uh, you can put number one uh, here uh, because Bacon says that the principal fruit of friendship here principal means most important so this is the first benefit of friendship and it it is the most important one he says the a principal fruit of friendship is the ease and discharge of the fullness and swellings of the heart which passions of all kinds do cause and uh, induce he means to say fullness and swellings of the heart if you are reading this line then you will understand that he means that one can So if you have a friend, you can convey your heart's full and true feelings. This is the most important thing of friendship that you don't have to keep anything in your heart, but you can really, you know, paint it all out. Uh, uh, you can just uh, throw it all out and say it all out to a friend. And then he says, we know the diseases and st of stoppings and suffocations are the most dangerous in the body. When he says stoppings and suffocations stoppings and suffocations uh, he is talking of heart diseases so you know uh, heart diseases are the most dangerous so uh, according to bacon if you you do not have a friend and you keep, keep all your worries you know in your heart then you are liable to have stoppings and suffocations which means you are liable to have heart diseases and it is very dangerous so it is better if you have a very a light heart and you take all your stress and burden out and uh, say it to a friend and he says and it is not much otherwise in the mind so even you know your mind feels very light if you can say it uh, say all your problems to a friend and then he gives us some cures uh, we all know what cures are uh, medicines so these are not medicines that you would have heard or we have not heard about them because they are you know look like medicines from some ancient time so he says if you have a problem with the liver so sarza is the medicine if you have a problem with the spleen steel if you have problem in the lungs then sulfur and if there is some trouble with the brain then castorium these are some cures as i said that he mentions he says you may take sarza to open the liver steel to open the spleen flowers of sulfur oh i'm sorry he says flowers of sulfur uh, for the lungs castorium for the brain but no receipt openeth the heart but a true friend very easy to understand he he tries to tell us that if you have a true friend then uh, i'm just making some space over here so that i can write a true friend is the only cure of the heart so 
um, heart is something which is very important he has told us that you know any heart disease can be very dangerous so uh, what comes handy in case you have heartache it is a friend so basically a friend is the best medicine for the heart and he says to whom you may impart griefs griefs joys fears hopes suspicions counsels and whatsoever lieth upon the heart to oppress it it he means to say that uh, if there is a burden on the heart um you know it is unburdened by so you share your feelings with a true friend and you really unburden your heart this is what he says and now let us move on to the next paragraph where he says it is a strange thing to observe how high a rate great kings and monarchs do set upon this fruit of friendship now uh, let me just tell you that when we move on you know through the pages uh, he gives us a number of examples a uh, number of examples of kings and monarchs who have had a number of friends but they have really not been true friends because it is very difficult for a person of power like a king to find friendship very difficult and he will uh, show it to us you know through a number of examples so what he is starting over here he is going to continue you know later on also so this um, point is very important that you know great kings and monarchs they also set a high rate now this word rate is important please note it and i will come back to it uh, after reading this line he says it is a strange thing to observe how high a rate great kings and monarchs do set upon this fruit of friendship which um, uh, so you can say that even even kings and monarchs wish to enjoy true friendship so you know just like normal people enjoy true friendship they also wish but is it easy for a king to find true friendship this is the question so he says whereof we speak so great as they purchase it now i again say please note this term purchased i will again come back to it many times at the hazard of their own safety so he he uh, hazard means risk they risk their safety and their greatness their position but they really wish to have true friends and then he says for princes in regard of the distance of their fortune from uh, that of their subjects and servants cannot gather this fruit they cannot um, you know gather you can say they cannot enjoy this fruit fruit of friendship except to make themselves capable thereof they raise some persons to be as it were companions and almost equals to themselves which many times sorteth to inconvenience sorteth to inconvenience you can say that it leads to problems now that i have read till here i am going back to these two words which i had uh, circled earlier rate and purchase and then i am reading this line that princes princes in regard of the distance why is there a distance between the king and the subjects and servants there is a lot of difference there is a difference of uh, you can say there is a difference of rank 
there is a difference of position uh, difference of fortune uh, so a king really has no equal a king has no equal and if you must have heard that friendship is best among equals so you can only make a friend if that person is equal to you so how can a king make a friend when really there is nobody who is equal to him so what does a king do he raises some people so if he likes people uh, you know maybe somebody who he thinks should be his friend he raises him and how do you raise somebody he now come these terms rate and purchase they actually purchase friendship and how do they purchase friendship they purchase friendship through uh you know maybe rewards or maybe position of power uh maybe you can say honor so they give that person rewards positions of power and honor and it is it can lead to a lot of problems also because when you raise somebody to your equal then that person can become a threat to you and especially to a king anybody you know can have the greed uh, anybody can turn hostile if you pick him up from a lower position and raise him up to be your equal and that person after gaining power can actually overpower you he can overthrow you so this is a great risk do you remember this term this is a great hazard a risk to his safety his greatness but what can a monarch do if he really wishes to have a friend he has to raise that person and he says uh, i am reading the modern languages give unto such persons the name of favorites or privados i am writing the meaning for this term i am sure you must have heard the word confidant confidant means somebody whom you trust you know you tell your secrets to that person so that person is your confidant so he says um, in 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 modern languages you can t uh, you can uh, call that person a favorite or a confidant as it as if it were a matter of grace grace or conversation but the roman name attaineth the true use and cause thereof naming them participis uh, curerum now again he has used a latin term which means a sharer of cares um cares in hindi you can call it chinta so somebody he is not just a favorite or a companion he must be a sharer of cares he must participate in all your problems he must listen to um your anxieties and especially for a king a king has a lot of anxieties a lot of problems so if he has made a person a friend then that person should become his sharer of cares okay um maybe you can actually write this down also that uh, for sharer of cares that is you can write down so they should share the anxieties of the ruler and also offer good advice 
for it is that which tieth the knot tieth the knot which makes the bond uh oh if you there can only be a bond between the king and the friend if that person plays the role of a counselor also adviser also okay and we see plainly that this hath been uh, uh done not by weak and passionate princes only but by the wisest and most politic that have ever reigned so he says don't be confused that maybe some here passionate would mean emotional not just emotional kings have made friends like this he says no even the most a uh, wise of rulers have made friends and now he is going to give a number of examples who have often times joined to themselves some of their servants uh, joined to themselves you can um, maybe he means to say joined to themselves who, who have made some servants their friends whom both themselves have called friends and allowed other likewise to call them in the same manner using the word which is received between private men private men means who share a close bond and now in our next video we are going to do uh these examples which bacon has given us and uh, examples of the kings and the people whom they have called their friends i hope you have understood this much and uh, see you in my next video goodbye